Uh, Senator Bitter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for being here. Do any of you, including the minority witnesses, uh, disagree that um, any child born alive, whether after a failed abortion or not, should get all available medical care for survival? You want to do this, Jody? Does anyone disagree with that? Senator, please repeat that, and I'd be happy to answer. Sure. Do any of you, I said it specifically including the minority witnesses, yeah. disagree that a child born alive, whether it's after a failed abortion or not, should get all available medical care for survival? I don't disagree with that. I think that the doctors who care for women who are receiving abortion services have the health and well-being of their patients utmost in their minds and they're looking for the best possible health outcomes. And we should leave it to doctors to make those decisions, and we should be leaving it to women to make the choices about their own pregnancies. So just to be clear, nobody disagrees that a child born alive should get all available medical care for survival. Dr. Foster? Um, I, I think that the problem with this bill is that it treats all pregnancies the same, and there are pregnancies where the I, didn't ask about the bill. I, just asked the, about I, that I do disagree that I can imagine situations where the doctors and nurses have decided that there's not a point in medical intervention, and by whisking the baby away, you've taken away a woman's chance to hold her child and say goodbye. Okay, so if there is care available towards survival, you think that in some cases that care should be denied. I think that the law says that, that, all, that the child has to be taken away and receive medical care if there are signs of life, which doesn't allow for the physician or nurse uh, or, the, more importantly, the wishes of the family to say that, that they don't think that, that care is going to help in this case and that they want to be able to hold their child. And if, if the care could lead to survival, do you think that that should be able to be denied? I think that doctors and nurses and women themselves know best whether care would lead to survival. This bill doesn't allow that judgment to be made. Okay, other witnesses? I, I just, I just agree, disagree with what you're saying. The worst complication for an abortionist is to have the baby born alive. And I do not feel that um, the abortionist has the best interests of that child. Um, at stake, and the and the mother may not either. Um, the bill is not saying that you must give that um, that baby extraordinary care. They're just saying you have to give them the same care you would give any other baby at that gestation, and an, and at, at that gestational age, they do need to be where they can get the the best help, and the mother can go with them. So. Any other witnesses? Yes. First, want to say that I'm not a legal expert, and I don't know exactly what the law says. But I do think this question of survival is more complicated, and and I just want to clarify that with our situation, it's the complexity, right? So there is a possibility. Let me back up. There is a possibility that this situation, in itself, that his diagnosis was not lethal, but. If he had been born, he would have been born into a life of seizure, of pain, of suffering. And that, to me, is this question of survival gets very complicated. And I think that those were conversations that I needed to have with my doctor, that I needed to have with medical experts, that we needed to have with people who were very well versed in what does it mean to be a neonatal, what does it mean to be born into the state. Dr. Malloy. Yeah, I would just like to, sorry, to add that sometimes in neonatology, you don't have all the information until the infant is born. And for, there are plenty of children who have seizure disorders who do not live a life of pain and suffering. And that the medical providers performing the abortions are not the right ones to assess the outcome and quality of that child that is then born alive. So that baby definitely should be taken to a medical facility where pediatric and neonatologists can look at the child and take things from there. My, I'm sorry, my time is running out. Let me just get one more question in again for all of the witnesses. Does anyone disagree that 
a child, a fetus at 22 weeks is capable of feeling pain. Is there any disagreement about that? I disagree. You disagree? There is no medical evidence that shows that fetuses feel pain until the third trimester. And why is it normal medical practice to give a child at that age anesthesia? Uh, Senator, I'm not a doctor, so I can't speak clinically, but I know of the medical evidence that's in the literature today, and there is no evidence that suggests that fetal pain exists until the third trimester. And you have no opinion about why, in that case, such a child is given anesthesia? Uh, I cannot speak to the clinical question. I'm sorry. Okay. If, if I may, just and my medical colleagues, I think, think can speak to this more clearly. Uh, the majority of scientific evidence that's out there in reports show that children by at least 20 weeks do respond to pain and, and have pain stimuli in place. There is one report of the many hundreds of reports on fetal pain and fetal science. The JAMA report, which maybe the minority witnesses are referring to, that says, uh, you know, one developmental stage that hasn't been in place for a child in the third trimester is what's required for pain. But the majority of scientific evidence is heavily favored in the direction that a child by at least 20 weeks, and usually um, before 20 weeks, is able to perceive uh, and feel pain. I would definitely agree with that. And that's why anesthesiologists and surgeons and neonatologists use pain medication, because it's supported by the literature completely.